Well, good morning, everyone. And happy Father's Day to all of our fathers here today. And thank you for being faithful and uh, offering your gift back to the Lord as you have been entrusted with his greatest responsibility. And that is to be uh, one who gives guidance and direction uh, to your home and to your family. So thank you for that. And we'll celebrate that in just a little bit uh, this morning. But we welcome you here to the Heart of Baptist Church. Does anyone know what this week is? BBS. BBS. <laughs> and uh, you see a few uh, wearing their shirts as we prepare for the beginning of BBS tomorrow evening. Some will be staying uh, today, coming back at 1 o'clock, and they're going to be decorating this church, and so we're very excited about that. Uh, we've already had some folks pre-register their kids, and we're looking forward to a great week, beginning tomorrow night at 6.30 here at AR Baptist. And I know that you will be praying for us, and many of you will be assisting us, and will be a part of the DBS team this week, so thank you for that. I do want to remind the men that we have a men's breakfast this coming Saturday, June 24th. It will be at 7 o'clock for me at the Gallatin Cracker Barrel. And uh, we'll open the place and uh, we'll uh, close it and we'll have a good time there. So we hope that you'll join us and be a part of that. And that is this coming Saturday, June 24th at 7 a.m. Also, Brother Larry wanted me to remind those of you that have signed up for the gun safety and criminal class that you need to go ahead and go online and pre-register, and you have two dates that you can choose to be a part of the gun safety course, and that's either July the 8th or July the 15th. Those are both Saturdays, but it would be helpful if you would go ahead and go online and pre-register for one of those classes. And so I know uh, that you're looking forward to the instruction there and the assistance with that, and we appreciate Brother Larry putting that all together. It is good to have you here this morning, and as we share this time together, uh, we thank the Lord for the opportunity that He gives us to uh, come into His house and to know that as we do, we can offer our worship and thanks to Him. Brother Bradley is going to come, and he's going to open us this morning with prayer and uh, with a call to worship. So, welcome Brother Bradley as he comes. And share it with us this morning. All right, good morning. Well, happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. It was a special Father's Day for me because it's my first one uh, as a father, so uh, happy about that. Um, I just want to share a quick little word of encouragement uh, to you guys this morning for Father's Day. Um, I, I, I preached a message here about two years ago, and um, something that I was really studying and, and researching about parenthood, little did I know I was going to be a parent so soon after that, um, but I really believe that God doesn't make any mistakes on who he makes parents and who he doesn't make parents. You know, I think being a parent is one of the highest callings anybody can ever have on right. earth. And so if you're a father, if you're a mother, you know, grandmother, grandfather, it's one of the highest callings God has truly given you in your life. And it's something that we shouldn't take lightly. It's not something that we should just pass over. And if God entrusted you with a child, if God entrusted you to take care of somebody that maybe is not a child you've heard, you're, you're the guardian of that child, take that with great honor. Because God doesn't make mistakes. And God knows the person, the mother, the father that you can be. And God's giving you that child for a reason. And unfortunately today, there's a lot of parents that you know don't see that call as a very high call anymore. There's a lot of parents that don't live up to the standard that God's called them to, and uh, because of that, the kids suffer. And so um, a lot of you may be in a situation where you came from a broken home or a home that just wasn't perfect. And so I want to encourage you guys as well this morning that even though as earthly fathers and mothers we make mistakes, sometimes they come from broken homes because the world is sinful and it is corrupt and it doesn't go uh, all according to how God would intend it to go, um, God does encourage us here in 1 John 3, 1. He says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. And so, no matter if you had a great upbringing or you didn't have the best upbringing, all of us have a Heavenly Father that is God. And God is perfect. He loves us completely. He loves us so much that 
He sent his son on the cross to die for us and come back from the grave three days later to give us salvation and a hope and a future. And so, dear Father's Day today, you know, honor your earthly father, celebrate them today. I also want you guys to think about this morning, how great of a love your, earthly, or your heavenly father has for you, how much he's done for you, how much he's striving after you, how what a wonderful plan he has for your life. If you haven't given your life to him today, I encourage you to do that, because no matter how bad your life is on earth, or how, you know, the car that you may be dealt here on earth, your heavenly father loves you, he has a plan for you, he promises to give you a hope in the future if you put your trust in Him. And He said He's there today, waiting with open arms to receive you and to love you uh, with all of His heart. Let me pray for us this morning. You know, I thank you so much just for Father's Day, and just the honor and the blessing it is to be a father, the honor and blessing it is to be a parent, God. Uh, like I said, there's no mistakes there. And you, you entrust us with a child, and that is a huge responsibility. So I ask for the fathers and the mothers in this room that we don't take that lightly. We take that as one of the highest honors and uh, privileges that we have on earth. But also, God, I ask that during Father's Day, throughout the rest of our lives, we look to you as our Heavenly Father. That no matter what we do here on earth, no matter how you know, bad things get on earth, you're still striving after us. You forgive us. Your grace covers us. You love us. You care for us. And so, God, I ask that we uh, decide to follow you and live each and every day according to your plan and your law, God, and that we teach others about your love for them. And we show them, God, that no matter how the world treats them, you see them as a child of yours, precious and holy in their sight. Thank you so much, God, for what you've done for us and what you do for us. In your name we pray. Amen. Good morning. As the worship team comes upon the stage, I'm going to ask you to rise to your feet, if you would, and let's pick upon the screen and let's enjoy worship together as we celebrate our Heavenly Father. This is my Father's world. Let's sing together. This is my Father's world.
check me. Gas station glasses, don't care what the masses think about me with my sweet good team. I'm rocking my doctors with the covenant face. I got that St. John's bait in the black from my piece. I look nice. I got dozens of dollars and that's why. We go straight to my dollars and my mind. I don't care what the dad make you that you put the devil. It's a talent I have. I'm worldwide. You can be gone. I see the inch go. today, thank you to you men who have taken up the mantle of being there and being present, acknowledging 
the failures that we've made and that we've had, and yet not giving up on the responsibility that God has placed upon us. And I'm grateful today that you are here and that you are surrounded with family, and I pray that today will be a time when your family will acknowledge the contribution that you are making to their lives. And I pray that we will find the courage to entrust ourselves as men and fathers to the care and the provision of Almighty God so that we will find ourselves expressing not only our love for those that God has entrusted to us, but His love as an extension of His work and presence in our lives. Here is what God says to the men, to all of us, but specifically to the men. Hear these words from Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the path of sinners, or sit in the company of mockers. Instead, his delight is in the instruction of the Lord, and he meditates on it day and night. He is like a tree planted beside flowing streams that bears its fruit in its season, and whose hot leaf does not wither. Whatever he does, prospers. The wicked are not like this. Instead, they are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand up in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to ruin. I would ask you today to pray that God would lead us in the path of righteousness, that you would begin to recognize the responsibility that he has given to you to walk in that path of righteousness, not only for his namesake, but for the namesake of our children and our society, this church, our community, that God has blessed us with and that God has entrusted to our hearts. So I want to ask all of the men here today, would you just stand for a moment? And we want to stand before the Lord and be still before him and allow him to encourage us and to challenge us with his calling upon our lives. So then would you just stand today and let us say thank you for who you are. Heavenly Father, we live in a world that would like to cover all of your life with darkness. And yet I believe these men who are standing before you today have committed themselves to allow you to shine your light through them. Father, we may think that our impact doesn't reach very far, but if we could touch one life and make a difference in one life, we will have an impact that will set all of heaven into motion. I pray for these men. I pray for what you have entrusted to them. I pray, Father, that in the midst of the failure that we have experienced in our lives, that we would look to you and we would come as people committed to repenting and confessing our sins, that we might be forgiven and restored to righteousness. Father, I pray that we would uphold the mantle of righteousness, the torch of righteousness for all the world to see. I pray that we would be men who would take time out of our lives, our busy schedules, to meditate on your word and your instruction. That we would not only think about it, but that we would allow it to be the way of our lives. And it would be the instruction that guides every word and every thought and every deed. I pray, Father, that in the midst of the many challenges that we are facing, that you would remind us that we belong to you, 
that we are the apple of your eye and we are the instruments of your grace. Bless these men and the families that they represent. And I pray that you would restore us to a place of authority, a place of compassion, a place of mercy and kindness as we lean in and as we stand on your love for us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. God bless you again. Thank you so much for sharing your lives with us. Second Corinthians 6.18 says, And I will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. You know what that means? That means that God chose the father relationship to best describe how he wants to do it with you and me. He didn't decide to be that overlord. He didn't decide to be just an all-supreme God. No, he came down to terms that you and I could understand. It's hard to measure what love a Lord could provide or what love an all supreme God could provide. But it's a little bit simpler than if we think about the love of our Father in heaven. You stand your feet, we'll continue to worship. Let's sing together. How deep the Father's love for us.
in Christ forgave you. God add his richest blessing to the reading of his word today. Proof is in the pudding. I have been known in the churches where I have served to be a connoisseur of banana pudding. <laughs> you can tell I've partaken in some. A number of years ago, one of the ladies at Victory Baptist Church decided that she was going to bless her pastor and bring the ingredients for a banana pudding. And in a bag, she brought me on a Sunday night the following ingredients. A can of instant pudding. Three green bananas. A box of Walmart wafers. And to add insult to injury, a container of cool. <laughs> now, let me just say to you, as a, a, a connoisseur of banana pudding, there's nothing about that that is banana pudding. Amen. <laughs> Not one thing about that. Mm -hmm. If you want to impress me with your banana pudding, the proof will be in for the pudding itself. It needs to be pudding that doesn't come from a can. It needs to be made with bananas that have specks on them. <laughs> ready, right, ready for the pudding. It needs to be genuine mellow wafers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And when you put that topping on it, it better look like a cat that's licked it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's nice and golden on top. And that sugar has come out and it has developed those little honey pearls <laughs> on top of it. <laughs> and some of you won't like this, but I want you to bring it to me right out of the oven and let me dip it. <laughs> <laughs> that is banana pudding. <laughs> the world is watching us. And instead of honey pearls on the meringue, what they are seeing is depressed cool on a mess. <laughs> And for many in our lives, the children that God has entrusted to us, it's okay for us to recognize that there are times when we are a mess as fathers, and believe me, there are many times that I wish I could go back and take back a word or two, an action or two to my children. But I pray that in the midst of all of that, they have acknowledged God's grace and God's forgiveness in my life as I have sought their forgiveness to be restored to them and with them in the goodness and in the kindness of God's amazing grace. Amen. We need to be people who acknowledge the fact that if we're going to be the kind of fathers and men and people of God that the world is longing for, we need to allow the right ingredients to come, up, to come together in the right formula, recipe, so that the world will see evidence of God's presence on display in our lives. Our children will see God's presence even in the midst of those moments when we find ourselves failing to be all that we have been called and and declared to be in Christ. That they can see the hand of God at work in us. As we're learning the lessons of life, as we seek to teach them the lessons of life, we need to help them see God's forgiveness extended to us so that as we extend forgiveness to them and as they extend forgiveness to us, we will begin to be the power of God's love and mercy and kindness through His grace. 
And so as we think about these ingredients and how they are put together, Paul is inspired to write a message to us where he talks about allowing the ingredients that have already been placed in us as a result of Christ's work on our behalf through his death on the cross and his resurrection from the dead. And he says this, the first thing is that we need to speak the truth in righteousness. It's important that we not fall into the trap of the darkness of this world and continue to lie and to build upon the lie and the deception of this world. This is when we fail, we need to acknowledge failure. When we find ourselves being less than we are in Christ, we need to own up to that. We need to confess our sins, even if we confess our sins toward our children, to them, and ask for their forgiveness. We need to speak truth in righteousness because we are one community, Paul says here. We're working to build community. And if I can't trust what you're saying to be true, how will you ever allow me to participate in this community of faith that is known as the God of Baptist Church? And how will the greater community surrounding us be able to trust us when we say that Jesus saves, that God forgives sinners, and that God has a plan and a purpose and a promise for any who will call upon his name? If we don't speak the truth and righteousness, how will they ever believe us? When we speak into their lives in the midst of their great brokenness and pain and sorrow that they're experiencing in these moments. The world is filled with deception and lies. But the hurting that are all around us, the hurting that are living in our same address, they need to find truth and righteousness and experience it in Christ Jesus. Secondly, we need to deal with anger and righteousness. I hear a lot of people say that it's not good and that Christians should never be anger, angry. That's not true. In fact, that's a lie. The scripture says that it's right for us to be angry. There are some things that we should be angry about. I don't know about you, but I'm telling you there are some things going on in this world that I'm pretty angry about. There are some things going on in the lives that are being forced on our children in schools and forced on our children in society right now. I'm pretty angry about that kind of stuff. Telling girls that they, can not, they don't have to be a girl, telling boys they don't have to be a boy. Let me just tell us all this morning. Let me put it out there. I was looking for a job when I came. It'll be okay if you don't want me out there today. So let me just tell you this. God created us male and female. Amen. Amen. And the lie that the world is perpetuating on us is a lie that is sending us down the tube and into the darkest dark. And kids are so confused today because rather than loving them in the truth and in righteousness, we are perpetuating the lie yes. by supporting the lie that the world is telling us. We need to recognize that there are some things that we should be angry about. But in our homes and in our fellowship of belief, fellowship of faith, anger, should be something that we deal with immediately. The scripture says, do not let the sun go down on your anger. Deal with anger and righteousness. The fellow was speaking to one of his buddies at work, and he says, I'm so, I'm so tired, excuse me, of every time my wife and I have a disagreement, that she gets historical. And the man said, no, 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 you mean hysterical. He said, no, I mean historical. Because every time we have a disagreement, she brings up every failure and every problem that I've ever created in our home. She's not allowing the anger to be dealt with in righteousness. We 
you deal that way with our kids sometimes. Instead of dealing with what's in the moment, we go back to the first time they break the car. The first time they bent the rim on the car. I had to make two trips to Jackson, Tennessee because my daughter bent two rims on her car. I should have known because my buddy, who was one of the football coaches in Vietnam, Julie was the driver's head teacher. I signed her up for the summer class <laughs> so that he could take her out of the driver's head car. And I knew we were in trouble when he came to me and he said, Chuck, he said, here's the keys to the car. You probably need to take her out on the weekend. <laughs> on your side too. <laughs> Bringing that up to my daughter every time I got in the car with her didn't help me. Right? And we need to be reminded of the fact that we don't need to be, to be historical or hysterical. We simply need to allow the grace of God to be evident in us. Amen. We need to deal with things. We have a tendency of not dealing with things. So what do we do? We have a power keg over here. We just keep loading it up. And all of a sudden, we come to that point, that breaking point. And instead of having a firecracker go off, we have a load of TNT go off. And instead of having something that is a scratch to deal with, we have an amputation. Deal with anger in righteousness. How important is that for us? To not let the sun go down on our anger. So finally important in these days in which we live. And then Paul says, work with righteous intention. Let those who have been caught stealing, let those who have lived their lives taking from others and living out others. Let them recognize that in their redemption, that is no longer their course of action. They need to be people who work honestly and who have an honest day's wage, and as they do, they are to set some aside so that when people enter their lives that have needs, they will be able to be a blessing to them because they are no longer taking from others, but they are producing in the process. In our home, we need to be people who are not stealing the love of our children. In robbing them of our love, we need to be people who are working diligently in righteousness to let them know how much we love them and how grateful we are that God has entrusted them to us and we give ourselves to the task of ministering to them in Jesus' name. Even when that means some tough love. Loving not going to steal away that which God has intended for our children to receive. We're not going to steal from others that which God has intended for them to enjoy. I'm here to say to all of us today that ill-gotten gain will never be a blessing to you. You may think it is in the short term, but I'm going to promise you We work, and when we do the things that God has instructed us to do in His calling and in His purpose, and we do it to His honor and to His glory, not only will we be blessed by it, but we will become a blessing to others. Amen. And so we are to work with righteous intentions, and we are to edify others in party ways to them. And we live in a world where we think that if we can run someone down with our gossip and our rumors, it'll make us look better and we'll be bigger in the community around us. I'm here to tell you that if people are honest with themselves and people are stand-up folks and they're people that are in Christ, gossip and rumors will do nothing but tear your reputation down. Friends, we need to give up all this stuff about 
rumors and gossip. I, I, I get so frustrated with people when they come up to me and they say, Brother Chuck, rumor has it. Well, that's exactly right. Rumor does have it. And the rumor is about to have you, so you need to get away from it. The scripture says, flee from the devil, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Get away from these rumors. Get off this stuff on Facebook and Instagram and all this other stuff. Buying into all this stuff that no one can verify. Speak it true. There's no need for you to join in the gossip. There's no need for you to run down someone who's already hurting. There's no need for you to join in and destroy the life of someone else. Listen, you're an agent of redemption. You're an agent of God's grace. You're an ambassador of God's love. For heaven's sakes, we need to be offering forgiveness. We need to be running to those who are hurting and broken. Yeah. And we need to be placing our arms around them and saying, Lord God, help me to love them back to you. Yes. We live in a world that's not crazy. We're not interested in edifying one another. We're not, ex we're not interested in extending grace and imparting grace to those around us. Of the matter is sometimes because we're not feeling so great, we think that if someone else around us is not feeling great, it will make us feel better. No, all it will do is remind you that misery loves coming. We need to be people who rise above the misery and allow the Lord to lift us up and to hold us with His righteous right arm so that we can impart His grace as we receive His grace to those in our lives. So different than what the world is offering today. So different. And the world is looking for something that is different. Those in your life that are hurting, those that we know that are suffering, they're looking for a different answer. And the different answer comes to Sincerely, they that God has placed in us. Yes. Acknowledge the presence of God's Holy Spirit. Paul says, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. How do I grieve the Holy Spirit? You deny His presence in your life, you deny His work in your life, you deny the fact that He's telling you that's not good, that's not for you. You deny and grieve the Spirit of God when you follow the ways of this world rather than following the path that God has selected for you. Thinking that I can't help myself. Thinking that I have to push that button on the computer because it's the only thing I can do. No, it's not the only thing you can do. Resist the evil one and he will flee from you. Here's what happens. We've allowed temptation to become something that we just embrace so easily that we don't even attempt to hold it off. We don't even attempt to stand up against it. That's grieving the Holy Spirit. Look, when that website pops up on your Facebook, don't go there. Don't go there. In fact, just close Facebook. But Brother Chuck, I have to have a presence. Really? Is that the presence you want to be known for? Is that the presence you want to be known in? Really? Are you imparting grace? Are you acknowledging the role of the Holy Spirit in your life? Are you allowing the Holy Spirit to surround you and to keep you safe? Or are you grieving the Holy Spirit by saying, not today, brother, later? Paul says, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Trust in the power of God's Spirit that has sealed you to the promise of God. You are not a maybe. 
You have been certified as the promise of God. And you have been sealed to that promise. And in that promise, you know that he will never leave or forsake you. And you know that he will and is in the process of delivering you from evil. Trust him. Don't take the easy route. Be strong and courageous as you walk in the power and in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Avoid the manifestation of the evil one. Look at what he says here. Let all bitterness and anger and wrath and shouting and slander be removed from you, along with all malice. Don't walk there. Don't go there. Put that out of your life. Know that you've been delivered from all of that. Don't think that because you can shout as loud as those shouting all, in the, uh, all around you, that you're going to be heard. No. Darkness covers darkness. Light defeats darkness. Don't allow. Don't allow the manifestation of the evil one to be associated with your life. But finally, allow your life to reveal Jesus as you love God, Heavenly Father, with all of your being, and as you love all of those that he loves. Verse 32, and be kind and compassionate to one another. It begins at home. It begins in the home. It begins in the church. It begins here. We are to be kind and compassionate to one another. Here and now. We are to forgive one another, to restore one another, to allow Jesus to not only be the thought in our mind, but be the power in our life that is at work as we reveal how much we love God, the Father. And how much we love all the humans. Because we have been forgiven in Christ. As the Father has loved you, we are to love him. And if we are to love him, then we are to love one another in his grace and in his grace. I ask you today, is your life made up of green bananas? Or is your life made up of those perfect, specked bananas ready for deliciousness? <laughs> side of the street are you The world's offering cool. Jesus offers golden. <laughs> Heavenly Father, may we also offer the greatest gift that we have received through faith even the Lord Jesus. And Father, may we give evidence to the world that not only have we been with Jesus, but as we walk day by day, Jesus is with us. In us, and in us, for all the world to see. Lord, grant us today Courage to stand in the county as the proof to the truth that God the Father loves, and God the Son saves, and God the Spirit seals us with promise for all of eternity. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen.
us stand together as we do for the Lord and Lord Jesus. And if you have that simply says, Lord, I'm coming home. Maybe today you need to come home. Maybe you lived out there in the far distant of land like a prodigal son. You've been running, you've been hiding. Today you know in the Lord's will and in the Lord's purpose that you would come home. If you've never trusted Christ, be willing to admit today that you're a sinner and need the Savior. Trusting that Jesus Christ alone can be that Savior. And if you will call upon his name, his promise is that he will never turn his back on you and never turn you from us. Will you trust him today? Maybe you're here and the Lord has the ministry to you and you work with the Lord's Baptist Church. It's where you will worship, where you will learn, and where you where you will serve. say yes to him as we sing together. Will you come home to me? To the Step out.